Today on Ballistic Burgers, I'm going to be making Sam the Cooking Guy's best burger, version 3, but only I'm making it better. Let's get going. So first things first, before I get a bunch of hate from Sam's fans, I'm a fan of Sam the Cooking Guy. I know Sam the Cooking Guy. He knows me. We've had the opportunity to hang out a couple times. I've spent time at his house eating his food. So Sam's a great guy. He makes fantastic videos. He released a video. It's his third version of the best burger he ever made. And he even pointed out that with these videos, they're just rocking it without you know doing any type of pre-cooking to test out the techniques and the recipe. He loved the burger, but I think there was a few things that he did that he would do differently if he were to make this video over again. And I'm going to kind of make those changes and hopefully he'll appreciate it. I know I don't know if he watches my videos. I know his uh, camera guy, Chance, does. So Chance, let me know what you think. Anyway, in this video, uh, he uses 90-day dry-aged brisket for the meat. I'm also gonna toot my t horn right there. Uh, there's been a few channels do dry aged briskets on video. I did the first. So, Greggy, I did the first dry aged brisket video. Anyway, I don't have any dry aged brisket on hand. So, what I'm using is get this. This is a 200 day dry aged prime ribeye. And what I did on another video, I'll, I'll post the video at the end of this video here. You can click on it. Um, there's a chef out of Australia. He has a restaurant called Fire Door. It's a live fire restaurant. His name is Linux Hastings. Yeah, Linux, Linux Hasty. And he has one of the options on the menu is a 200 day dry aged steak. And what he does is he'll take the rib roast, dry age it for 30 days, conventionally and then he coats the entire rib roast with melted beef tallow puts it in for another 170 days and that's what i did here i replicated chef hasty's uh, technique and we're bringing on the funk here this was the last stick that i had out of from that video and i um, used my chamber vac and it's been in the freezer ever since but so this is the perfect opportunity to try this out so what sam did was he ground the beef first the brisket first formed them into uh, balls loose balls and then smoked them for about 35 minutes till he reached an internal temperature of 100 degrees and i wouldn't have done that um, it's pretty obvious in the video and, and and he noticed it it was obvious he noticed it that uh, the meat got kind of dried out and kind of kind of crumbled a bit when it hit the flat top when he flattened it especially one of the uh one of the patties in particular on the flip there's a low angle on it but you could see the particles dispersing sam's a fantastic cook and he salvaged it he made it work but what i'm going to do is smoke the steak separately i mean before i grind it so uh, I'm just going to get some smoke on it. It'll be fine, and then I'll grind it. The other thing, Sam used uh, his Traeger, ran it at 200 degrees. I'm running, I'm using my LSG uh, pellet grill, and I'm running it at 160. I, I don't know how low the Traeger goes. I want to say about 170, but I would have went with 170 instead of 200. Anyway, let's get this on. All right, so while the steak is getting some smoke on it, I'm going to make for you guys Sam's burger sauce. First thing I'm going to add is Japanese mayo. Sam uses a lot of Japanese mayo in his recipes. This stuff is awesome, but the thing that makes it so awesome is it has MSG in it. So there are, uh, MSG's really gotten a bad rap, but there are people that have allergies to it. So if you're one of those people, just use regular old mayo. Anyway, we're gonna throw in some mayo. He doesn't really measure it, so I'm not going to either. I'm just doing it based on what, what his looked like. Some Dijon mustard. We're gonna add some sriracha sauce. Some garlic paste. Some salt. Some fresh ground pepper. Some stirring action. little tasting action yeah it's good <laughs> it's a good sauce that garlic really pops in a good way 
nice little heat from, I almost went with a different type of chili. I was going to use like a chili oil. <coughs> Get me in the back of the throat right now. It's not too hot, but as it was going down, you know, it kind of coated my throat. But yeah, this is good. Good job, Sam. That steak's been on the pit now for about 10 minutes. One of the things Sam did with those meatballs, which I thought was really, really cool, was he misted them with a, it was a mixture of water and bourbon. Now, Sam had a pretty big atomizer, which is just a spray bottle that sprays a fine mist. My atomizer is a lot smaller. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. I'll let you go. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what I <laughs> what I decided to do instead <laughs> was um, <laughs> what I <laughs> what I decided to do instead was I just went with straight bourbon. This is bullet bourbon, and this atomizer is specifically made for like cocktails, like misting a little bitters on a uh, martini. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and spray the steak with my tiny atomizer here. All right, you can see we're getting some color here. All right, so I'll probably spray it one or two more times. Right now, all we're doing is waiting on that steak. So we're about 30 minutes in. And there's what we're looking at now. What I'm going to do now is place the steak in the freezer, just kind of let it cool down, tighten up again, and then we're going to grind this beast of a steak. Here's what that meat looks like now. I, I actually cubed it up right when I got in the kitchen with it, then put it in the freezer. But it's got a gorgeous color, and it's, it's cool now, and it's a lot firmer than it was. Um, you'll notice I actually added a little bit more fat to the mix here, simply because the, the fat cap on the outside of that ribeye, it went with the trim after the dry aging process, because, you know, it had that, I can't remember what it's called, but you know that, that bark that you that develops from dry aging. So that was gone. So I added some more. I always keep a little bit of uh, fat trimmings in my freezer on hand just for emergencies like this. All right, I'll get the hopper loaded up and I'm just going to try to alternate, you know, lean with fat. That's one thing. Another thing I think I would have done, you know, if I were Sam is even though there was fat cap on that brisket, it was a flat, there's just not a lot of intermuscular fat, you know, in a, in a brisket. So I think I would have added a little bit of more fat. Just saying, that's what I would have done. Here we are. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Now, one of the things that Sam did mention in his video is how important it is not to overpack, you know, to leave the hamburger meat kind of loose. 100% correct. A lot of people, they overpack their, their patties, their meat. And especially with a conventional burger, that's when you're going to get a tough burger that, you know, it blows up. People wonder why their burgers swell up. It's because they're overpacked. So if you're not grinding your own meat, just look for this. Look for the burger meat in the package to be nice and strand, like spaghetti. You got good, a good ground beef there. Try to avoid, I mean, to make really good burgers, you don't want to use those chubs where it's just jammed in there. And also those square <laughs> blocks of, of burger meat, it's, it's just so tight that that's when you're going to have, again, problems with the tough burgers. We're going to go ahead and portion out the, the meat now. So Sam was going with five ounce meatballs. That steak, I weighed the meat after I cut it off the bone and without the additional fat I added, it was like 20.3 ounces. So got plenty of, plenty of meat here. Mm. 
And here we are. That's a big, big smash burger. It worked out good. I'm actually going to put these in the fridge while I get the griddle heated up and uh, the cookies, some Sam the Cooking Guy, best burger, version three. It's gonna be awesome. This is my new Wildfire 30 inch griddle and I'm running the whole griddle at a medium high right now. I'm going to add a little oil. This is just avocado oil. I just want to use, you know, an oil that doesn't have a lot of flavor and that has a high smoking point. Get those meatballs down. When you're doing a smash burger, it's important actually to put the burger ball <laughs> down and just kind of allow it to uh, heat up a little bit, soften up before you smash it. I'm going to smash this, hold it down for about 10 seconds. Definitely smelling that dry aged meat. Season it with some salt and pepper. Right here I have some bone marrow compound butter and I can tell you, I did a uh, burger video, did a copycat of the stockyards out of Toronto, Canada. They're a butter burger and it, it's topped with a bone marrow compound butter and this was a good call on Sam's behalf. We're going to use this to uh, toast the buns. It's not hurting that a little bit is running into my burgers on the griddle here either. These are brioche buns. I didn't mention that. And I think it's really important to toast the brioche buns because it also helps soften them. The steam goes up through there and softens them. You can see now how it's starting to cook into the center of the meat. So we're going to go ahead and flip these. Sam topped these with American cheese and I'm using American cheese. I'm using white American cheese and yellow just to add a little bit of variety here. It honestly just tastes the same though. But Sam, Harvest Ranch deli section, they'll, cut, they'll slice it right off. This is made by Boar's Head, good stuff. These are looking really good. Let's do this. <laughs> so I'm gonna kick this off with some of that sauce on the bottom bun here. Meat patty down. White cheese, white American cheese. Again, the cheese tastes the same, it just looks different. Another patty, third patty. We're getting crazy here, Sam. fourth patty. Now on that last bun, more of that delicious sauce. Crown that burger. And there we are. Sam's best burger. Volume three with hopefully a few improvements. It looks really amazing. And this is the back side of the burger because I'm trying to figure out what I want for a thumbnail. A lot of sauce or a moderate amount of sauce. Anyway, it's a crazy looking burger, Sam. Along with a bigger atomizer, <laughs> you may have a bigger mouth than me because I don't know if I'm going to be able to cram this thing into my mouth. <laughs> Give it a try though. Mm. 
It's a lot. It's good. The sauce is amazing. I can tell you right now, well, 90 days, there's a lot of funk in. You're coming for us. Sorry for the cut that the sirens got really close. I don't know what's going on. There they go again. Anyway, there's a lot of funk in 90 days. Imagine the funk in a 200 day piece of dry aged meat. And it, you know, it doesn't taste like rotten at what this meat has very much a, a blue cheese flavor. So I'm, I'm guessing with, with Sam's burger, there was probably a bit of that going on as well. You know, you get, a, there's an earthiness and um, a twang. <laughs> Definitely, like I said, it, it's like a blue cheese is on here. I think four patties makes a really good thumbnail. Two patties would make an insanely good burger. I don't, it doesn't need four patties. I love the brioche. Um, American cheese, you gotta go with American cheese for a really good burger. I mean, it's just kind of become the standard. Um, but yeah, it's good, Sam. And uh, I hope you appreciate what I did to your creation here. Thanks for the inspiration and uh, see you guys in the next video. If you're not sub, please do ring the bell, thumb it up, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Cheers.